<laughs> yeah, and then we just have our little updated Jane Jetson. So for many, this is a boomer reference, but it's pretty widespread, and the whole idea of the Jetsons and a Jetsonian lifestyle. But now, really, I don't know if many of you remember, this was a Dove commercial a couple of years ago, and they did um, March Simpson, and they also did Jane Jetson. And just to get her more relaxed, more hip, and she's more with it now. And that's really what we're talking about yeah. here. And, and the most significant difference about what she was then and now is she's working. And she, she actually drives a car, too, which is another major point. <laughs> but um, the thing that we really want to get to is how does this impact our lives, which is actually on the handout at this point. And there's a Shiva picture with four um, words. And we'll just the second one, go to them very quickly. The first one is communication. So how is the 21st century mom communicating? Well, she's communicating um, via basically cell phones. That's keeping her connected to her family. So half uh, actually, 80% um, of the moms have cell phones already, and then 14% have a smartphone. And then also um, via social networking, that's becoming very huge in terms of helping her be connected to her family, but also to her communities as well. Well, and the, and the key thing that we want to keep in mind here is so often when we have these discussions, we end up talking, of course, because we're at CES, about the technology. But for a mom and for someone who's trying to keep in touch with their family, their friends, their husband, manage their schedule. It's not about the technology, it's about the talk. It's about the human connection, not the internet connection or the technology connection. That's just a tool. It's the same tool that it was years ago, just has more things that it can do. The other aspect that's really we see coming into play is this whole what I call media mashup. So we see a lot of user-generated content starting to happen. So not just YouTube, not just blogging, but being able to post, wanting to have a dialogue with corporations, with companies, that is becoming the new content provider, the individual themselves, and how corporations manage that, and how you as a corporation manage your message to that mom. Exactly. The next C is coordination. So what we see is that basically 97% of moms really consider themselves as the chief um, memory officer, and that they need to keep everything that's going on in the family um, it, it, the scheduling is all of their jobs, so their kids, themselves, their spouse, and so that's a major task. And what we find is that today, a large part of that still happens on paper. So they, two thirds have paper calendars, 15% keep it in their head, and only about 15% are using something electronic. And the, the the thing that's falling apart is the last mile part of that, which is keeping everything coordinated, synced, and and alerted out to the various parties that need it. Right, which is why we really look at the future of cloud computing, hopefully to resolve some of these issues, to provide that virtual file cabinet where we can access from everywhere. But one of the things also to think about when you're thinking about a mom and the scheduling and the management, that so often the tools are created because in a linear manner, right? That you do this and then you do that and then you do that. Or you want to do this and you do that and you do that. Mom's life is anything but linear. It's very random. Yeah. And then the third C is cohesion, which is this idea of work-life balance and how, how um, your day is put together. And basically what we see is that most moms feel that their lives are a little bit out of balance and that it's very chopped up, as, as Robin was saying. So what we see is the Internet's consumption are basically 15-minute bursts four times a day. And then outside of that, you have all these time bursts of free time. And what moms really want are to be more productive in those time bursts. So that's when we start think, seeing things like netbooks and mobile phones and smartphones allowing people to be more productive, and so those are things to think about. But what also happens is the rules of engagement are all blown to hell right now, right? <laughs> you were to your parent talking about, you know, you were tweeting at dinner last night, and okay, do I answer the tweet? Do I answer the email? When should I act like I'm online? When should I act like I'm not? Am I always accessible? What's the proper, proper etiquette around some of these things? It's all up for grabs right now. And then finally, creation. It's this idea of mom um, expressing herself. And so basically, nearly um, all moms have a digital camera, and quite a large portion of them have video cameras, plus other ways of creating things um, with technology. So it's a question of how are they using that, and when are they doing these things. Right, and I think this is really actually one of the most interesting aspects. I'm not sure how many of you are aware that um, the craft industry, it's industry itself is a $30 billion plus industry, that the large majority of that industry itself is paper goods and scrapbooking is the bulk of it. And all of these digital images, all of these items that get created, get created to tell a story and to keep a legacy. And it's not just about uploading, it's not just about sharing in the moment, it's about also preserving a history. And I believe um, the Ford CEO mentioned Maker's Fair 
in his um, keynote the other night. And what that was talking about is that's really taking technology and pushing that edge of creativity. And what it's done is it's made things accessible to a large population that they can create and express, and they look at this to take time for themselves and also to create this legacy for their kids and for their family and to create some me time. And it's really interesting. It's not just you might see some flyers from brothers around here. Also, Herskavana, which is another sewing machine company. These sewing machines are very computer and technically complicated, and women are using them as forms of creative expression and cottage industries as well. Okay. I could no, definitely not be an IT person. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I have faith in you. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. Maria. We can um, move to the next slide. So I, everybody has a name for for moms today, and the word that I use for that next Jane Jetson is actually Mom 3.0. And someone asked me recently, why did you write your your last book and instead of calling it Mom 2.0, why did you call it 3.0? Well, it's my belief that moms today actually engage in a 3.0 world like the internet three, web 3.0 will be. However, what happens is they bridge together technology. They're living in a 2.0 world, but they're acting like a 3.0 world. And I'll give you an example. A mom goes on a playground, and she will ask another mom, where are you going to stay at Walt Disney World when you go there? Immediately, the one mom will size up the other mom and say, OK, she has a teenager and a toddler. She needs to be on the monorail, so I need to tell her a hotel that's convenient for the pool. Um, easy for the teenager to get in the park, but I know that she doesn't like uh, Polynesian, so I'm going to tell her the contemporary. Delivers relevant information and content back to the other mom in a very 3.0 manner. However, she's doing it with 2.0 technology. So my definition of the moms today is a very powerful consumer who not only purchases product for herself, but influences her peers and their decision making by providing relevant and intuitive conversation and creates ecosystems of solutions. And so what I want to talk about is how do we take the information that and, and all of this wonderful research and actually execute to connect with these 3.0 moms. So one of the, um, this is probably the most valuable slide I ever speak to and, and it, it goes hand in hand with the research that you just heard about. There are five key motivators. I'm a scientist by, by um, education. And I always have to know the why. Why does the mom carry five devices? Why does she do the things she does? Because if you understand the why, then you know how to execute on the why. So A plus B equals C, if you know the why. So what my research has shown is that there are five key motivators. And these are actually global, um, because I've done this research around the world. There are five key motivators that motivate a mom. She nurtures relationships. Why? Because it gives her connections. She shares because there's an obligation to share. If I said to parent, I love that necklace you have on. Most women can relate to this in the audience. If she got it at, let's say, Marshall's for $5, she's going to say to me, oh, Maria, guess what? I got it at Marshall's for $5. Why is she sharing that information with me? because she's not only telling me that she knows how to do it better and simpler, shopping, but she's also nurturing the relationship with me because she doesn't want me to go to Nordstrom's and buy, spend $25 for the same necklace, okay? So, so we share out of obligation. That's why digital photography and digital imaging has really caught on with moms because it, it, it allows us to fulfill that motivation. Then we look for ways to help us do things better and simpler. We create ecosystems of solutions. So in the digital imaging world, a mom has her ecosystem. If you're a guy and you've ever heard come home and your wife says to you, you know, no, 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 I'm going to do it my way, that's because what she's saying is, I got my ecosystem going on. If I need to print something for a school report, I'm just going to go and print it on my desktop publisher. However, if I just came back from vacation, I'm going to upload those pictures to walmart.com.